Hey, I am the Greg, one of the hosts of the Greg and Dave Show. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Do you need some extra motivation in your life? Are you looking to be inspired? If so, then look no further than the Good God Company. At the Good God Company, their mission is to create and clothe all loving humans with their unique, inspiring, and beautifully designed t-shirts. All of the products from the Good God Company are equally designed to motivate you and improve your life. From their mugs, workout tanks, to eye-appealing shirts and sweatshirts. Learn more about their renowned products by visiting thegoodgodcompany.com. That's thegoodgodcompany.com. The Good God Company is proud to support public house media. The The Good Good God God Company. Company. I'm I'm feeling feeling good. good. Tiana Vander High here, host of the Refined Redhead podcast on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast. Once you're done with this episode, you should definitely come check out my show, the Refined Redhead podcast, where we talk to real people about relevant information in hopes of inspiring you to chase after whatever dreams you've set out to accomplish, persevering through whatever obstacles are in your way. A new show comes out bi-weekly every Tuesday. So don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you never miss an episode of the Refined Redhead podcast. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. Good morning. None of us know how much time we have left on this earth. What is left in the end are our actions, the memories you left behind and how you made people feel. What you want to leave behind is the people remember with love. This morning, welcome to Choose Your Eyes. Thank you so much for joining me. And this morning, we're going to talk about grief. We're going to talk about early death, and we're going to talk about how sometimes it just feels so unfair, but at the same time, it's a beautiful thing because if you believe in Christ, you know exactly where your loved ones are going. And we can be super sad that they are gone before we have time to really enjoy their entire life and uh, love them unconditionally for forever. But at the same time, knowing that our loved ones are with Christ and that they are in a better place and we will yet again to join them soon, someday, um, is, is a comforting thing. So welcome again to Public House Media. My name is Kim Meyer and welcome to Choose to Rise. I am so glad that you're here. Um, I had another topic to, for today is about how to finish what you start. Um, but there's something else that's on my heart today that I just feel like I need to share. And, um, and so I looked up a little bit of info to kind of share with you today and I want to talk to you about self-care and grief. Um, we've had a pretty interesting situation happen in our family and I wouldn't say it's interesting, I guess that's a bad word. I would say it's more of a sad, sad situation. Um, one of our family members was, um, it was an accidental shooting and he is very young, only 15, um, and has passed away recently. And so today we are going to go celebrate his life. Today is his funeral. And, um, you know, I was just thinking last night at the visitation, there were so many young children that came through that knew him and for me, that was the hardest part, like watching high school kids, freshmen, junior high kids come through the line and just be so deeply saddened. And so I want to talk today about God's put this on my heart. Like I totally had something else planned to talk about today and completely ready to go, but God's put this on my heart. And so I want to share with you today. Um, you know, grief is something that all of us will go through at some point in our life. In fact, it's a super healthy um, thing to do is to grieve because if we hold it all in, if we hold in those emotions, if we um, let them consume us, it it takes away all the joy in our hearts and takes away all the joy in our life. And that's not how um, the people that have gone um, want us to live. And that's not how, what God's intended us to live. And he wants us to remember that we're all put here on this earth for a short amount of time. And that, um, you know, while we live here, we have a purpose on this life in this, on this earth, in this life, but, um, that we have a greater home to go to, that we have a more beautiful, more amazing, more, um, 
it's an unfathomable place to be at next. And so we shouldn't be sad that people are leaving. We should be super happy that they get to go spend more time, um, live eternity with, with Christ, our father. So, um, a father or Christ and our father in heaven. So let's kind of, um, dig into a little bit here about how, how grief can make us or how sad things in our life can just snowball into, you know, different levels of anxiety or helplessness, or sometimes you feel like you're just out of control. You crave the ability to just think on your own. And, you know, a lot of times depression can set in, um, those kinds of things. But I really want to talk to you today about, um, suggestions for self-care during a grieving period and how you can not necessarily, I don't want you to push down and, and not think about and not feel the, the hurt, but I want you to think about um, how to overcome it and how to not let it define who you are. So here's just a few suggestions for self-care uh, for grief that I um, honestly just researched this morning because it was just on my heart that I need to share something about this. So number one, it's okay to talk about it. It's okay to talk. And this, these are tips for not only the person that is grieving, but also the people that are around the person that is grieving. So if you are, you know, if you were somebody that attended the visitation last night, or if you are know somebody that is, there's a situation going on um, in their life, you know, and this can be not necessarily grieving a death, but like just in deep sadness about anything, you know, in the last week, uh, I just wrote about this in, in my post on Choose to Rise that, um, that, uh, there's, there's just been, there's, the world is not a good place to be in all the time there. We all have struggles in this life. God does not give us a perfect life. He get, he tells us straight up that, um, we're going to have struggles and, um, it's about how we respond to those struggles. It's about how we lean into him and, and draw our strength from him and know that he's trying to make us stronger. He's trying to build endurance inside of us. And so whether it's a death in the family, whether it's maybe a disease that your a family member or a friend has been diagnosed with, maybe it's losing a parent from for whatever reason. Um, we recently, um, found out last night that a good friend from college lost his dad, um, to leukemia very quickly. Um, we had a, a, a family here in town recently that, um, they had their, their house burned down and lost the father in the situation. Um, we've had, you know, this accident with, with my husband's cousin. We've had, you know, like there's just, the world is not always a happy place to be in, but, we can learn from those situations. We can come together in those situations and we can learn to, to cling to God in these situations. So this morning, uh, I just want to share a couple self-care tips during this grieving period, and hopefully it helps somebody in the long run and, um, and will help, will help you overcome the situations and become more comfortable in a situation and have, give you some tools in your toolbox to rise above the current situations and live your best life. So, um, here's number one, it's okay to talk about it. Okay. Um, it's to be honest. I've, I've struggled with talking about some of the things that, you know, are happening, or I don't know, have the words, I don't know what to say. Um, and sometimes you don't have to say anything. Sometimes it's okay to just be there and give a hug and know that, um, you know, you're there to, um, to help people. And it's an automatic response for a lot of people to say, I'm fine. You know, I'm learning. It's okay to, but you know, you need to learn that it's okay to talk about it. It's a, it's okay to ask for help. It's, um, find someone that you can share your feelings with, uh, people who can, who experience the same loss as you are, are lifesavers. You can relate to them. You, you can talk about your understand your situation and they understand it. If you're feeling alone in your grief, or if you're feeling alone in a situation, think again, because you're not alone. Like I said, this world is full of crazy things that happen all the time. We're not guaranteed a, a good, a, a easy life. We're, we're guaranteed a good life with him. And so you're not alone if you're grieving. You're not alone um, in your circumstances. And there's always somebody else in your inner circle or in a community group or in your church or in some online group, maybe that you knows exactly how you're feeling. And you would be more than happy to listen to you vent or to offer hugs or to um, just be that listening voice that that you can talk to and be vulnerable with. And I know it can be super hard and super scary to get vulnerable on things. Trust me, I get vulnerable about a lot of things on here, um, but it's so worth it. So take your time, um, get to know people, talk to people, share about it and, and talk about it. The more we can express our feelings, the more we can 
and communicate what we're feeling and how it's making us, you know, how, what it's going on inside of us, the better we can process it and, and move on from it. The second thing is take your time. Grief works on its own timetable. So honor that. Um, you're not given a specific time frame for your grief. You don't have to be over it in a week or over in a month or over in a year. Um, you know, it's, but it's good to find balance in that time too. So um, not letting it consume you to a point where you never move on from it, but knowing that, you know, it's, it's different for everybody and everybody needs to be able to go through the process in their own time. So if you're finding yourself being able to laugh and have moments of happiness during that early grief, that's totally okay. It doesn't make you a bad person. It doesn't mean you don't care. If you're still deeply affected by your, the loss months later, that's okay too. Grief is different for everyone and you're not obligated to get over it or you're not, you're not obligated to you know, stick with it for a long period of time because somebody else is sad for a longer period of time. Um, you, you know that, you know, your feelings are your feelings. Um, you know that your, um, your, your time is your time. So we are allowed to feel more than one feeling at a time. And you're allowed to, um, you know, that life will get easier. Life grief is a part of us now. And, um, and it, it doesn't mean that the memories will go away. You can actually have joy in your heart by remembering the good times. So uh, you don't have to fight against the the pain. You don't have to fight it, try to erase it away. Allow yourself to ride the emotions of of emotion and without judgment and without trying to fix it. Uh, you're going to feel the way you feel and you'll get to be normal again in a little while. Uh, and the third thing is it's okay to be in standby mode. I noticed that um, through some different situations, there were a lot of people in standby mode. Everything non-essential got turned off and um, you just really get to focus on the things that you need to keep yourself functioning. Uh, I was standing last night with um, my husband's aunt and knowing that, you know, just keep going is what we get, was what she said. And I was like, yep, you, you just got to keep going. But, you know, allowing yourself to stay in that standby mode a little bit and let other people take care of the space around you. And, you know, knowing that, um, that you are going to do what you need to do in order to keep going. But at the same time, you don't have to take care of everything else on your plate either. Understand and know that people are going to be there for you and that you can accept that help and that you just have to, you know, take stepping stepping stones to get to where you back to your reality and you have a new reality now and it's going to take some time to figure that out so um you know learning through the process and going that way it's it's going to help you um it's going to help you move forward in a, a faster easier way than just trying to do everything and becoming overwhelmed in the situation make sure that you're still taking care of yourself um, and taking care of, of of your situation even though others are going to feel like they need um, that your help as well. You know, the fourth thing is grieve your own way. Um, you know, some people will tell you to stay busy. Others will tell you to take time off. Others will say to make sure you take care of yourself, which you should. Um, others will tell you to spend time with friends and family, discover your own way of grieving and let that follow. Let that be your path. Let that be what it is for you. Like self-care in general, um, what you really need to be probably is different than somebody else needs. So make sure that you are, um, are doing what you need. If you need space because you just need space, go have space. Um, if you need to be around people, find people to be with. If you you know need to journal, if you need to talk, if you need to whatever, follow that path to getting through the grieving process. And that will help you not only be more comfortable and confident in the situation, but it will help you, um, help you keep moving forward. I notice uh, in my own grieving process and in a few peer and a few others when when crappy things happen, I tend to just ramp up my life. Um, and in and in previous days, I've talked about how busyness is my escapism, and you don't want to get too much into escapism that you're not dealing with a process. On Monday, we talked about not numbing yourself, um, and so you don't want to get to the point where you're you're doing that, but at the same time, you need to make sure you're communicating and getting going, th feeling the feels, going through the emotions, getting through all of the hard stuff, um, so that you can face that stuff and not just push it back and and have it continue to eat at you, right? So uh, if there's an all the sometimes there's an overwhelming impulse to just 
make your home more cozy or get more comfortable or um, keep keep super busy so that you're not focusing on the things that are going to bring you down. But, you know, you have to face your feelings and even the uncomfortable ones. There's always going to be a lot of complicated feelings that come with grieving, that come with bad situations like this. But it's not just grief. It's often sometimes combined with anger, resentment, abandonment, disappointment, guilt. Um, There's a lot of you know, sometimes shame and doubt that comes up, uh, feeling that something's unfair, but allowing yourself to feel and accept all of these things without shying away from them as being wrong or bad. You, um, you're going to have, you're going to feel them. You're going to accept them. You're going to work through them and not just push them away. So you will want to judge yourself for your feelings, but don't you, you, whatever you're feeling are the things that come up and that you know that you can work through them with by yourself or with somebody else, or just acknowledge them so that you know that you can accept them and eventually heal from them. You can't heal from it if you don't acknowledge it. So um, look after yourself or let someone else look after you. Take care of yourself. I know I'm a super stubborn person and, and when crappy things happen in my life, I try to just take care of it myself. I don't particularly like um, being taken care of. Um, I like to be the fixer in my life. I like to be the independent woman that goes and does things. But I've learned over the last couple of years that that's not always possible and you need to lean on other people and that, um, you know, there's there's a lot of people out there that genuinely care and that want to help you and accepting help and comfort from other people is not, is not putting them out. It's not being a burden to other people. People want to help you. Um, so let them be there for you. Let them care for you. Let them bring you food. Let them, um, help you, you know, talk about things, being a listening ear. So when someone asks if they need something or if there's anything they can do for you, take them up on it. Um, let your friends make life easier for you. And that's one of the things that I'm super proud of uh, our family for is like, we've, I married into an amazing family and they are, there are strong and mighty in numbers and strong and mighty in faith and strong and mighty in emotion and, um, healing matters. And we're always there together. And, you know, we filled the funeral home last night with, with the, the family, um, but also just the amazing people that came through last night and helped everyone heal and show their sympathies and their appreciation of life uh, for this young man and just, um, comforting and, and things that, it was so sad, but so amazing at the same time to know that life matters and people care and your healing matters. And, um, you know, we want you to take the time that you need to grieve. We want you to take the time you need to, you know, live your life in, in a, the way that you need to live your life. Um, but also know that there's, there's going to be struggle, but there's also going to be joy on the other side of it. Um, in our church, we have this uh, service that if you can go to orchard hill dot, um, org and, um, go to the current teaching series. You'll go down farther to the, there's a, there's one about, um, living the two rails and there's, and you're like a train car in life. You're, it weaves back and forth. Uh, and you have one rail of, of joy and you have one rail of sorrow and there's always, you're always teetering back and forth and you're always on both of those rails. But, um, at some points you're going to be super sad and some points you're going to be super happy and it's not a judgment to be on one or the other and you don't have to stay on one or the other. If you're too far on one, um, life's going to topple. If you're too far on the other, life's going to topple. So you have to stay balanced in all of those and know that things, good things are going to happen in your life and we can celebrate those and be joyful of them and not so good things are going to happen in your life. But in the, in those moments, we still have to be joyful and we still have to be happy and, and, and yet still feel all the emotions that come with the the sorrow and the sadness, because when we feel those and we accept those, then it's when we can bounce back to the happy side and remembering all the positive things that have happened in our lives because of those people. So thanks so much for joining me this morning. I know it definitely was not a happy topic to talk about today. Um, Not your typical um, build you up kind of conversation um, this morning, but definitely something that I felt like I needed to share and I needed to talk about today, uh, not only for myself, but for others listening that are, I'm sure, going through the same problems because, um, or a similar situation, because I know that this life has so many things um, that bring us struggle and bring us pain. And it's my 100% mission in this life to help people rise up out of their current situation and live their best life. And, and in doing that, it's meeting us where we're at in our emotions. It's feeling 
feeling the feels. It's, it's knowing that you're not alone in any situation and that there's always somebody that you can lean on um, in order to, to live a, a better and healthier life. So thanks again so much for joining me this morning here on Public House Media. I hope that you come back. I hope that you share this message with somebody else that needs it and, um, you know, screenshot it share it on your social media because there's always somebody that can can listen to this that is struggling with something and hopefully they can get some tips t- on how to overcome them or how to work through the pain or work through the situation and um, so thanks again for, for joining me and um, if you haven't yet already please check out the good god company um, they are one of our sponsors and we greatly appreciate them they have uh, great merchandise from tanks to cups to bags to all kinds of things that can help you show off your faith and show others that you are God fearing and amazing and you love him and he loves you. Um, you know, so if you're interested in any of those, check out their website. You can look them up on Facebook. You can just Google the good God company and find them there. They are a fun company that we are super blessed to have sponsor choose to rise and other amazing shows here on public house media. So thank again. Thank you again for listening and feel free to share this like comment, um, send this podcast to somebody else that you know is struggling and see if it can help them um, overcome and um, and have a, a healthier, happier day. Again, thanks so much for joining me. Talk to you all on Monday. When we'll be talking about a much happier topic of liking what you see in the mirror. <laughs> all right. Talk to you later, guys. Bye.